Okay, a quick video just to walk through the new Fox EQ range. It's uh, been posted on the website just over the last few hours. Uh, it looks like a modified ECS 4800, just looking at the model name. It comes in the same form factor as the existing ECS battery system, with the major differences being now a very impressive 41.94 kilowatt hours of storage. Same uh, other characteristics as the entire high voltage range from Fox with 90% depth of discharge and all the other benefits around uh, control and management. Looking into the actual spec of each type of battery, depending on how many slaves you have, looks like the minimum is one master, one slave, although if you're a three-phase uh, inverter, that typically uh, you'd require one master and two slaves. So keep an eye out for the requirements, single phase versus three phase. But this looks like it goes all the way up to having one master and eight slaves, giving you that total of over, well, it's just under 40, 42 kilowatt hours looking at the data sheet, which is super impressive. The only thing that comes close to that is the new EP range of batteries that I uh, walked through in a, an earlier video a few days ago. So check that one out. Um, what I was jumping straight into was to look at what the voltage range or the operating voltage of this battery is. And you can see that it tops out at 463.7, 463 and that's important because those with a generation one H series inverter are going to have a problem with fully charging these. So if you look at the data sheet for the H1, the Gen 1, it's got a battery voltage range of 85 up to 450. And as this battery goes to 463.7, so call it uh, 464 volts, you're not going to be able to get anywhere near the top end of being able to fully charge each cell if you go for a fully decked uh, nine battery system. As you can see, you could go for one less slave and go down to the one master seven slaves. That would give you an impressive 37.27 kilowatt hours of storage, but also keep your operating voltages within the range that a Gen 1 or the legacy H1 inverter can deal with. So what are your options if you do want the full stack? Well, you can jump over to a Gen 2, very similar looking uh, inverter to the H1 Gen 1, but it's the H1 Gen 2. Um, all of the same benefits that you're used to with the H1 with an additional uh, feature, the additional features being that higher voltage range, so from 80 to 480. So it will accommodate uh, both this, this larger battery which is the EQ range, but also the EP range, that, that large 40 plus kilowatt hour battery system that I reviewed the other day that looks a little bit like a Powerwall competitor. So the Gen 2 H1 will will be able to cope with that. The other benefits of the, the Gen 2, which I was going to talk about in another video, uh, is the ability to parallel the system, just like the K series. So you can parallel operate these with up to 10 inverters running. So, you know, 42 kilowatt hours times 10, 420 kilowatt hours of storage uh, on a single phase installation. You'd never be able to charge them, obviously, because the, um, the single phases are limited to 100 amps. So you'd never be able to, you'd never be able to f physically import over 400 kilowatt hours overnight. But it's nice knowing that the connection to the grid is the limiting factor and not the hardware of the inverter or batteries. So if you want to take advantage of these larger EQ or EP batteries, you're going to probably want to look for a H1 Gen 2 inverter and swap out the inverter for this new revised version or move to the K series. K series is, is very similar to the um, to that Gen 2, a very large voltage range up to 480 volts, so that's going to be able to accommodate those additional battery storage um, sizes as well. The K series comes in a size up to 10.5 kilowatt hours for a, a single phase installation, so super powerful inverter. 
I'm reviewing a couple at the moment, so I'll be doing a detailed video on those shortly. Uh, obviously, the K-series also supports the parallel function, uh, just like the Gen 2 H1, so really exciting. But, you know, back to the uh, back to the battery. So if you have a smaller ECS-style battery setup and you are uh, feeling like you don't have enough storage and the standard ECS range going up to 33 kilowatt hours isn't going to quite cut it. Looks like the option to have up to just shy of 42 kilowatt hours will be with us very shortly. Very interesting to see the pace in the products coming out of uh, out of Fox over the last couple months. Super impressive, and they're clearly trying to have the largest inverters with the largest battery uh, stacks with the most efficient systems. So yeah, really really impressive. That's all my thoughts on this. I'll keep you posted. Thanks.